So there's another dimension we haven't really talked about that has to do with the fake, with fiction, making things up in the sense of planting fakes with copying originals, with thinking about inserting something unreal into reality that I think is connected to what we've been talking about, namely that the kind of fictional world is connected to the real world. But there are moments when the fictional world kind of infects the real world. And I mean, this is perhaps best exemplified in the story of Clune, mm -hmm. this kind of fictional space, which then a conspiracy of scholars going through many generations start to plant in various encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. So we have the encyclopedia as another relatively new genre that comes out of French Enlightenment and Voltaire, and, of An course. Enlightenment idea to sort of order the whole world. Well, order the world, all, whole world. And now it becomes this source of disorder. Exactly. So there's sort of this, this kind of perverse inserting something mm -hmm. fake into the encyclopedia, mm -hmm. this made up place. How does that fit into what we've been talking about, the fictional world and the real world being more closely connected? Well, yeah, I think about Shelley talking about how poets cast shadows of futurity in front of them. And much as so much of Kafka's work seems to be intuiting the Holocaust that's going to mm -hmm. happen and swallow up some of his own family, it does seem to me that in this respect, Borges is already on to sort of the argument of the dialectic of the Enlightenment, that in the wake of World War II, people say that this rage for rational order can mm -hmm. create its own disorder inherently. So on the political level, I think this does have to do with the sort of repressive utopianism of the communists mm -hmm. and of the fascists alike, which is often, as in, in the case of particularly fascism, tied to some fantasized idea of a past that they're mm -hmm. creating. And of course, one of the things the fascists are doing, and Hitler is very strong about this, starting well before the time these stories are getting written, you know, they're rewriting history. Mm -hmm. They are creating this uh, sort of encycl right. fictional encyclopedia, right. really. Right. Take out all the Jews from history, put in yeah. some mythified yeah. idea of Germany yeah, yeah, yeah. or of Rome in the case of mm -hmm. the Italian fascists. I think there's a direct relation yeah. uh, to that. Then also the sort of metafictional right. play and the kind of almost championing, we can change the world. So in that sense, I think Borges really believes you know, and one of the great things about world literature, and especially world literature that will go beyond one particular local context, is the world doesn't have to be this way. Mm -hmm. You could change it. Right. And that literature doesn't just represent or reflect the world, but actually intervenes in it mm -hmm. in various ways. Mm -hmm. But also, he's nice because he's not simply saying, oh, look, you know, these are artists just like me, and I'm writing the great Argentine mm -hmm. novel. In fact, one of the things he does talk about is that, you know, long books are so boring. So he's writing books about books as a kind of modesty, a kind of Indian Argentine reserve. Yes, here's the passage. It's from the prologue to mm -hmm. the fictionists, to the fictions. The composition of vast books is a laborious and impoverishing extravagance. To go on for 500 pages, developing an idea whose perfect oral exposition is possible in a few minutes. A better course of procedure is to pretend that these books already exist and then to offer a resume, a commentary. So mm -hmm. that's the passage, right, you were thinking yeah, of. Yeah. Let's not add another masterwork of mm -hmm. world literature that's as long as, let's say, the tale of Genji or mm -hmm. the Odyssey. Or Ulysses. Or, or Ulysses. Wake. Let's construct these smaller but like perfectly made vehicles, these short stories that are essays, that are commentaries, that are footnotes, mm -hmm. that kind of intervene in this world in a kind mm -hmm. of very effective and pointed manner. It's rather like T.S. Eliot says, you know, countering the idea that, well, we, we know more than our predecessors. He says, yes, they are what we know. Mm -hmm. And I think Borges is relying on the fact we've had those centuries of right. literature. By reflecting on them, we can situate ourselves mm -hmm. better than if we just lose ourselves in another huge right. fiction. It seems to me that in The Garden of Working Paths that Chinese novel sounds a lot like James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake. Yeah. It's circular, it's infinite labyrinth, right. and Finnegan's Wake is full of references to itself as a crossword puzzle or as a labyrinth mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. times. There is a sense of kind of a moral urgency as well as a kind of literary pleasure in the fact that now we have all this literature. Right. We can live in this world and Use as our compass. Yeah. So very much a sense of being a latecomer to the world of mm -hmm. literature, but also a master of it, that we can do things with this existing mm -hmm. world, these centuries of masterworks that earlier mm -hmm. generations 
maybe couldn't do. I'm thinking maybe for him the map of world literature is like one of Kaimanj's portulan maps. Mm -hmm. You have a compass, you have a place, and you go from one port to another, yes. one masterwork to another, right. and you can find yourself. But you zigzag yes. through, and that's very much what these maps yeah, look like. Exactly. It also seems to me that to the extent that he so much thinks about different book technologies, his fictions are everywhere set in the world of bookmakers, he thinks about pirated copies, commentators, editors, all the jobs and professions that have accrued around these masterworks, who are copying them, interpreting them, tending towards them, mm -hmm. the exegetical traditions mm -hmm. that have developed. How does this relate to our moments now? So take, for example, encyclopedias. He's thinking very much about encyclopedias as they existed. They're organized alphabetically from A to Z. Maybe there's a fake one inserted. Students in the course are creating wikis, right? We actually live through a moment where, for example, what an encyclopedia is has changed. A, they're no longer organized from A to C. B, they're no longer written by experts, but by mm -hmm. students, by everyone. They're crowdsourced. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that looking back in the future, and I suppose this is a very Borgesian question, in the future he might be seen as the last great witness to the world of analog books and everything that well, came I was going to say the opposite. I was going to say he is the great prophet of the Wikipedia, of the <laughs> internet. See, yeah, right. To learn is nothing other than imagining the internet before it exists. Maybe. So it works both ways. <laughs> I think <laughs> exactly. that's... Perfect for <laughs> <realization>. Exactly. 